In this video, we are going to explore sensation by looking at what it takes to make sensation happen. Stimuli, the things being sensed. Receptors, the parts of the body that detect the stimuli. And transduction, the process in which those stimuli become neural signals that the brain can understand. Starting with sensory stimuli, the first thing to point out is that the word stimuli is plural. Just one is called a stimulus. And a stimulus, in the context of sensation, is an item or event that triggers sensory receptors. It is what gets transduced by the sensory receptors into a neural signal the brain can understand. For example, the stimulus for vision, or the visual images that we see, is light that has reflected off of the surface of an object. That light consists of photons or units of light that travel in waves, called light waves. The stimulus for smell, or olfaction, are odorant molecules that pass through the air and into the nose or that come up from the mouth through the nasal pharynx when we eat. These molecules reach the olfactory mucosa at the top of the nasal cavity, where they stimulate olfactory receptors and are transduced into neural impulses. And the stimulus for audition, or hearing, is sound waves. Sound waves are created when molecules in the air or some other medium are compressed and then rarefied in a wave pattern. Sound waves are funneled through the ear canal towards the eardrum, where they are further processed by the ear. So, those are some examples of sensory stimuli for a few of our senses. Sensory stimuli tell us about the world around us and about our bodies in it. But sensory stimuli will never tell the brain anything without the unique receptors we have for each of our senses and the ability of those receptors to convert the sensory stimuli into neural impulses that the brain can understand. The brain consists of cells called neurons that pass along electrical signals to each other. This is how information is represented and processed in the brain. In order for us to sense a sensory stimulus, it needs to be converted into an electrical signal, also called a neural impulse. Thankfully, the body is equipped to do the job with special cells called sensory receptors. A sensory receptor is a specialized cell for detecting and transducing sensory stimulation into a neural impulse. For example, the sensory receptors for vision are photoreceptors. There are two types of photoreceptors in the eye, rods and cones, named for their relative shapes. The receptors for audition reside deep within the inner ear. These receptor cells are called hair cells because they contain little projections called stereocilia that look like hair sticking out of them. And one more example, the receptors for gustation, or taste, are called simply taste receptors and are located deep in the crevices of the tongue. Most often, sensory receptors are arranged on the body in a way to detect sensory stimuli from the environment, outside of the body, but that isn't always the case. There are three categories of sensory receptors based on where in or on the body they are located. Exteroceptors receive information from the outside world, such as a butterfly landing on your finger. These are the receptors we tend to think of when we consider our senses, such as vision, audition, and olfaction. Interoceptors, on the other hand, receive information from internal organs and tissues, such as if your heart is beating fast. And proprioceptors receive information from muscles and joints about the position of the body, which you would use, for example, if you needed to touch your nose with your finger. Sensory receptors can also be categorized according to how they work, also referred to as functional receptor types. There are more than just the three types listed here, but three examples include photoreceptors, which work by absorbing light, such as in vision, mechanoreceptors, which respond to mechanical pressure or displacement, as in touch and audition, 
and chemoreceptors that react to chemical substances, as with gustation and olfaction. These functions of sensory receptors are what allows the process of sensory transduction to occur. So sensory transduction is the process by which a receptor cell converts sensory stimulation into a neural impulse. For example, in phototransduction, light becomes a neural impulse. The outer segments of photoreceptors contain photopigments embedded within their membranes that absorb photons of light, and this changes their composition and causes them to generate electrical signals. Multiple senses make use of mechanotransduction, which is when mechanical forces are transformed into neural impulses, such as with some forms of touch. For example, the movement of hair on skin can trigger transduction, as can the displacement of skin, which activates receptors beneath the skin's surface. Olfaction makes use of chemosensory transduction. When an odorant molecule binds to the cilia of an olfactory receptor, that smelly stimulus is transduced into a neural signal. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of how sensory stimuli, receptors, and transduction all contribute to the processes of sensation. Now that this video is over, consider briefly writing down from memory what you have learned. This sort of practice retrieving from memory is one of the best things you can do to remember what you just learned.